Let's look at some of the terms that many of us use on a daily basis that are accepted in conversation, but are technically incorrect as far as the regs go. Gary, you hear these all the time, don't you? Yes, I do, Dave. Whether it's during training or covering helplines for the ECA or the IET. Although we can often get away with this on the job, it doesn't do us any favours when we need to be technically accurate, especially when doing exams, such as the inspection and testing or design course. So let's start with ring main. Now, many of us, excluding Gary, of course, have used this term when referring to a ring final circuit. So what is a ring main? A ring main is actually a term that's used to describe how HV cables are used to connect one transformer to another on or around the grounds of, say, a hospital or a university. So a HV ring main is something you'll not see in your lounge. <laughs> OK, sticking with the word main, many use this word inadvertently to refer to the conductor that connects the main earthing terminal to the means of earthing, calling it the main earth or, or main earthing conductor. Now you can see why that happens, as there's lots of green and yellow conductors, so many will see that conductor as the main one. And of course, it is connected to the main earthing terminal. True, but if you think of larger installations, they will often have distribution boards spread right across the sites. And each of these will have its own earthing terminal, which you may hear referred to as marshalling blocks. So the main earthing terminal is the one that's only at the origin of the installation. And as there is only one earthing conductor, there's no need to put the word main in front of it. Aha, uh -huh, but Gunders, I've got you there. Surely if that's the case, then what's the position on the recommendation that's now included in Reg 411.4.2 for an additional connection to Earth to be provided via an Earth electrode? Now, is that conductor also a main or a supplementary one? Ah, oh, that's a really good point, Dave. But it's currently only a recommendation and it's not been defined yet. So I think we'll leave that for JPL 64 for Amendment 3. Yeah, kick it down the road. Hmm. Now, here's one for you, Dave. Many refer to this as an Earth wire. What's the proper term? Well, it's not Earth. But we've spent a long time over the years asking for twin and Earth cable at the wholesalers. Now its proper term is a circuit protective conductor, or CPC for short. But you might well get a blank look if you ask for a drum of twin and CPC. I know it sounds pedantic, but it's the correct term for the conductor used to connect the exposed conductive parts or class one equipment to the main or any other earthing terminal. And important to remember if you're ever answering exam questions or filling in certificates. Okay Gunders, another favourite while we're on the subject is earth bonding. Well what are we talking about here Dave? Earthing or bonding? Yes. They are two completely different electrical principles. But to crunch it down, earthing is used for automatic disconnection and bonding is to equalise potentials under earth fault conditions. Now there's a lot in there, so we're going to cover these in more detail in another Regs in Brief video. Next up we have low voltage. Ah, I love this one, especially where you see it incorrectly marked up on the packaging of some electrical equipment. Over the years I've even been asked if I wanted a low voltage or mains lamp at the wholesaler's counter. They're the same thing. Low voltage is clearly defined in the regs as a voltage exceeding extra low voltage, which for AC is 50 volts, and importantly, not exceeding 1000 volts for AC. So bizarrely, a 230 volt main supply and even a 400 volt three phase supply are defined as low voltage. It's worth saying here that any voltage, including extra low voltage, can be dangerous, depending on the situation, of course. So it's best never to interact with either low or even extra low voltage, expecting it to be safe. The next term is live and neutral, where the correct term is in fact line and neutral. Now I think we should cut everyone some slack here, as the regs only introduced the word live about 100 years ago. So. But joking aside, over the years references to L have changed to P for phase and now is currently L again. Yes, that's true, but at least it's logical. The reason is that neutral is also defined as a live conductor. So that helps us avoid ambiguity, especially when a regulation states, for example, all live conductors must be disconnected from the supply. That means all lines and the neutral of a three-phase supply, and in the case of a single-phase supply, 
That's LLN. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover, make a comment. To get discount codes for our regs courses, please sign up to our newsletter. And to ensure you get notifications about our latest videos, do subscribe to this channel. See, See you soon. soon.